Well, good morning. This is Lance with Speed and Chrome TV, and welcome back to the channel. Got a really great little uh, coup for you today uh, that we're going to be featuring. I was able to connect with my friend Matt McDonald a couple of weeks ago, and we did a really in depth, deep dive into this build, and uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, this features a little bit different than what I've done in the past, similar but different. But if you like this type of content, let me know in the comments. Uh, and again, please like and share, subscribe, and let's get into it. Thanks for agreeing to show me your amazing, your amazing coupe. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself to our watchers, awesome. Um, and we can, we can go from there, and then I'll okay. have you cool. tell me about this amazing car. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm Matt McDonald, and uh, this is my 1930 Ford Model A. And yeah, I'm here to <laughs> give you the story, I guess the uh, the build process. Um, and uh, some of the things that you know has led to, to being here. And so the first time I saw it was when I come to your house to buy a Ford Grill. Yeah. Or a '61. Yeah. That you had hanging on the wall. Yeah. As, as wall art. Yeah. Um, and at that time, what was that like? Four years ago? It's been a while. It's been a while. This yeah. This wasn't primer, and I'm okay. not even sure the body was on the chassis. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, yeah. they were separated for a while. It was kind of mocked up. I know yeah. it was in primer for sure. Yeah chassis I don't think was even done yeah. at the time. We talked about it a little bit and you had another four truck, 65? Yeah, 65 F100. Crown Vic yeah, chassis, Crown Vic chassis. Which was kind of the beginning of that. I mean, it's it's super common now. Yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah. But at the time, and you had done that, how many years before that had you done that? Oh was, man, I wish I wrote that down. Um, I probably had that car, that truck, um, in cars, total, cars yeah, cars. right, exactly. Uh, in total, about seven years, and I probably owned it for about two before I did the swap. So, okay. yeah, you know, maybe five or six years ago is when I did the swap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're not here to talk about that. Oh uh, yeah. It's a great truck. Thanks. It was a really yeah. Truck. I saw you in it all the time. It was fun. Different you shows, know? Yeah. And it, the stance was great. Yeah. I'll throw some. I'll throw some images right, on, cool. on the videos so if yeah. you know what we're talking about when yeah. I'm just describing it. I'll need you to send me some images. I got them. <laughs> to do that. Yeah. Um, but that was great. Anyway, we met yeah. that day. We met previously through a local speed shop that yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. I think, right? Right. Through Instagram or something. Yeah. And yeah. New mutual people. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And so, I used to buy Speed and Chrome off the shelf, <laughs> the, the print magazine. That's... That's yeah, been a, that's been a couple days. Yeah, I was going through some of my stuff tonight or before I came over looking at 
shirts and stuff, seeing what I still had, and I don't yeah. have a whole lot left. I was yeah. actually going to bring you a shirt. But. Yeah, well, cool. <clears throat> I don't you know, think you wear a small, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite a small. So, uh, yeah, I'm a tall guy. But so, yeah, you know what? Honestly, Speed and Chrome was like one of those cool magazines at the time. Like I was consuming Rod and Custom and Speed and Chrome and just like love these early iron cars, but I'd never really owned one. Right. Um, and so back in those days, I was just dreaming. Did you know the magazine was local? Uh, yeah, you? well, you know, not the first time I purchased it, but you know, you read it and yeah. I remember the Paradise Road one yep. and then I'm like, oh, this guy is from Modesto. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Local yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that was awesome. So is this your first 30s car? It is, yeah. So I, I own some custom trucks, um, you know, back in the day growing up. I was one of those young, crazy kids. Yeah. Um, uh, mini trucks and then a full-size truck, but you know going to car shows and custom scene um, When I got married, I had a 51 Chevy that uh, I, I was I did a chop top on truck or car, car. Okay. Uh, yeah uh, Chevy style line deluxe okay. and uh, did okay. a chop top on it. Yeah It never it never got finished. Uh, That's okay. why you know okay. like I did all the body work. I painted it Your first chop my first chop yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are hard yeah Chops it, are hard. it was it was um and basically got it painted rolling chassis shell yeah. and then you know life happens life, life you happens, know man. wanted a, a different house and all the other things and just yep, had yep. to get rid of that one so so that was like my first real you know hot rod kind of old school car um but my dad had had some stuff growing up my dad had a 55 bel air okay. like yeah for a long long time and we would go to car shows and and we always liked the like early 30s fords and so it was always just a dream to have one yeah so that's going to lead me into you know how i got this and well me and my dad got this okay. really yeah, because we we do share the car. I oh, mean, okay. it, it's a it's a shared car for sure. And it was a, was it running and driving when you bought it, or was it a? It it or? was running and driving. So as original or as a hot rod? Um, a uh, monster <laughs> of yeah mishmash parts. Uh, okay, well, yeah, those. yeah. So in 2013, I found a a coupe body, just a body that was really rough, and. From that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to build one. You know, I'm going to build a Model A. Um, and uh, in doing so, you know, I started doing some metal work on the body because, like I said, it was a, it was a basket case, yeah. really. Um, I was looking for a chassis. You know, I was looking for, like, what am I going to do with this body? And when you're searching Craigslist and Marketplace, like, you see things that are a little bit farther along. And so, you know, it was... Hey dad, let's go check out this car. You know, uh, it was unchopped. Um, it had the small block Chevy in it, the same motor that is here today. Okay. Um, it had the drop axle. It had coilovers in the rear, um, but it was stock interior, uh, like a pretty stock paint job too. It was like brown and tan. Um, so it was like a parade car probably at one time, and then. Somebody was trying to hot rod it and uh, was parting it together. The guy I had bought it from had only owned it like six months. And so, you know, you kind of lose the story of it. I, I don't know, you know, who owned it before that. Okay. Um, so the price was right. It was more complete than my body that I had. And so, uh, yeah, sold the body and we got this. And um, so... You know, we're like, cool, we got a hot rod, right? Um, but then start things started to happen. Um, one day we're driving and we're pulling it out of the driveway right here and the exhaust just fell off the car. <laughs> um, the, uh, the cast iron uh, ram's heads yeah. were welded to stainless steel pipe and just the weld just not, broke. Not welded well. No, no. <laughs> like, might have even and been both. brazed on or wow. something. You know, it oh, just... Okay. They were just weak and ready to go. So, you know, that and uh, the steering, 
where it was hitting the exhaust, you know, so we're trying to fix the exhaust and then we're realizing, oh, well, the steering is right there. There's right. no room. There's really no room right. in these cars the for, the for much. Keep it all under the hood, which you have hood sides, which yeah. I'm not going to be running hood sides on mine because yeah. it's easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could get the exhaust out away from your steering yep. and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, that really, I don't think people that work on these recognize that, you know, stock, stock hood sides yeah. and making that all work in yeah, here, it's tough. Um, it's tough. you know, and having enough cooling and stuff like that too. So it's been an engineering. Cooling is always a challenge. Yeah. 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 Um, so that car just had issue after issue. You know, there were some things, questionable engineering on it. Um, the... I was looking at it one day and I'm like, well, the gap on one side of the fenders is like a finger. And then on the other side, it was like a whole hand and the car kind of sat crooked mm. and the coilovers weren't, you know, a very good angle and stuff. So we were just having issue after issue with it. Um, we did like do a good uh, hot rod black on it. And I, I bought these wheels and tires. Um, so it looked cool, like unstock, uh, unchopped, kind of stock hot rod but there were just problems with drivability so we kind of decided like in 2014 hey let's let's do it right you know so um kind of from that point it was let's make a plan i you know as, me as an artist i had to do some drawings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i did some some renderings of like you know and kind of pitching it to my dad to like hey yeah. this is what we should do with the car yeah and uh, he was on board because we, we like the same stuff. Um, and the car, you know, the design wise is like, keep it simple, keep it hot rod. But like, we wanted to keep the fenders, um, the hood sides, you know, uh, just keeping a lot of the stockness. It's a lot harder to do that, by yeah. the way, for those yeah. who haven't built these cars. It's, it's easier to cheat like I'm doing and just running a grill shell, a grill, yeah. a hood and the body yeah <laughs> and not running you know everything yeah full fendered um, full fendered stuff is challenging uh, yeah a lot more gaps a lot more engineering a lot yeah. more thought wheels and tire sizes I mean, yeah you know is it going to rub yeah you know backspacing there's a way more to yeah way more to deal with yeah yeah so that's that was been fun a challenge like you know problem solve every step of the way um so yeah when we tore into it it was start with suspension stuff because that was a major problem mm -hmm. it had no travel in the rear you know when we were driving it it was just on the frame uh axle what on the frame did it, have any, it, was it had coilovers over. but they just didn't, they didn't accommodate push. anything yeah they didn't notch the frame or get it high enough that you had any travel it was just like yeah. maybe a half an inch of travel yeah um so kicked up the the frame in the rear yeah. basically back half to the car okay. um on the frame and also made accommodation for a nice fuel cell back there uh that's under the trunk okay so you're um, not running. right you so shave, no you shaved the fuel no tank there no tank. Okay. yeah did you put something else there or is it just no place? it's uh you know what it's hollow um and it's under the dash and, and you'll see the dash in a minute uh, I tried to leave enough space that I could put a vintage air in there okay. at some point, but I know a lot of guys will hide electronics or whatever. Yeah. In there yeah. There's, just you know, there's some wiring, but is a great idea. <laughs> I'd like to do that someday. It's you a little hot in our Valley, right? Oh gosh. It gets way hot yeah. 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 Those 107 days going to and from a car show or whatever is pretty, yeah. pretty hot. Um, so yeah. Uh, Framework was, you know, a lot of fixing, but also trying to do it right. Um, was that the original A chassis? Original A chassis. Was it boxed or anything it, when you got it? It was poorly boxed. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, when you're back half in and you're trying to tie in some stuff, I was like, yeah, I'm going to redo some of this boxing. Right. Yeah, so redid a lot of that. Okay. Uh, some new cross members. Raised the engine up um, because where it was placed initially, was just way too low in the chassis and that was why i was having so many steering and exhaust oh, okay. issues it was just set way too low in there so raised it up enough uh to redo a lot of that okay um 
found a cool steering unit uh, for these. Uh, it's from Unisteer. It's a rack, but you know, like a one-sided rack. Okay. So it's pretty cool. Uh, kind of so steering rack upgrade. And pinions, it's a style? Yeah, it's okay. a rack and pinion okay. style. Um, but you know, you still have. Um, yeah, that stuff. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a suspension expert. No, I know. So um, I'm not going to be filling in the blanks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a one-sided rack and pinion, okay. and then you still have a crossbar okay. and the steering knuckles and all okay. that stuff. So okay. in some ways, it still has a lot of the same appearance that okay. guys run that, that run a Vega box or something. Okay. Yeah, closed car, you're not really going to look down there and, yeah. and see the, the rack. Even though it looks amazing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You are gonna open it at shows and stuff. So yeah. Like you're gonna keep it. Yeah. Yeah. So upgraded all all the steering and suspension stuff. Just making sure everything worked yeah. correctly yeah. and and functioning. Um, trying to do it right. You know, the, with this car, it would it was a. Uh, I only want to build this car once. Right. Um, I still feel like it is a work in progress, and I'll kind of get there. Like, there's always something you can do, right. but. That's every old car. Yeah. Especially if you use them. Things yeah. break, things wear out. You yeah. learn what you like, what you don't like. Yep. Right? It's just totally. You know, I, I would say ninety nine percent of people looking at this car are gonna be like, That's a done car. Yeah. That's that's the way I feel. I'm yeah. like, that's a done car. You may have things you want to change, <laughs> yeah. But that's a done car. Right? Yeah. It's not in primer, you know. No. It's running and, and maybe it's it's complete but it's not completed in my mind. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, um okay, so yeah, the framework was fixing stuff. While that was going on, you know, redid some of the suspension parts just as far as like finishes, powder mm -hmm. coat paint. Um, so the frame built, is powder coated? Uh, frame is painted. Frame is painted. But yeah. Ch uh, chassis components are? Chassis components, like okay. the, the four bars and, and all okay. the steering and stuff, okay. all those were powder coated. Um, rear end housing powder coated too. And okay. uh, the rear end, like, built it it's just a s10 rear end you know okay. like a chevy 10 bolt okay. but um chose to kind of just go that route because uh some of the parts were cheaper stock width s10 yeah really and stock width I yeah didn't realize they were that narrow yeah oh that's nice yeah, yeah. it's nice when that happens yeah so for it, sure. it already had the s10 rear end it it did okay. um but you know went through it since yeah. doing the car right. might as well so right. put a posi i put a posi Posi unit in it. Okay. New axles, bearings, like redid and the whole thing. It's not a heavy car. That'll, that, yeah. that'll live. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, I don't beat on it, um, yeah. but yeah, the car is light and it yeah. can handle it. So yeah. So got all those pieces and parts together yeah. in the frame, and then um, one of my favorite days, and I've got some pictures of, was like we did a rolling chassis assembly day here with with me and my dad and some buddies, cool. and Pretty like. Cool. In one day, it went from tables full of parts, parts yeah, yeah, just yeah. parts everywhere, to a rolling chassis like we rolled it out at the end of the day, and uh, and so that was cool, you know, just getting the guys here, uh, some good friends that you know knew a thing or two, right. could turn a wrench, and uh, and we put it all together in one day. So we had a rolling chassis. Um, there was still you know a long ways from being done. Uh, I was kind of in body work and metal work mm -hmm. for a long time on the body because yeah. um, i did it this is again one of my favorite things about the car it doesn't look too radical but i feel like i did a lot of metal work changes to it um, so i'm gonna point out some of those yeah four inch chop okay. so four inches uh you know and with that you've got all your window gar garnish moldings and the windshield frame and all that stuff so just that alone is a lot of work and uh, i tried to keep some of the the seams that are around the back so i tried to keep all the seams stock looking so let me um, stop you yeah because i still need to have glass cut for my windshield and yeah. it's been cut now did you cut it all down and then just take it to a glass shop and they cut glass for it i cut the windshield frame yeah. and took it to dawn's okay and they no, did well, I'm gonna take mine yeah too. they did the, so the windshield the, glass the, it's basically all done it's all chopped and yeah it's, it's it's only like this tall it's yeah they but got, I need, but I need glass for yeah. it. Yeah, so. 
They got one old, old school guy there. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure he'll help you because if you walk in with a chopped windshield, yeah. they're going to like, we're going to send you to this that's guy. That's good to know. And right. uh, that's not too yeah, he knows, need to get that down, knows what so. he's doing. Cool. Yeah. So they did my windshield. Um, I have a stock glass in the door still. Okay. And then the three windows in the back, I just, uh, I made templates and I took to a place locally here in Oakdale. Okay. And they did all the other windows. Cool. Um, Fly glass is always... Glass yeah. Glass. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so metal work. Uh, chopped, then um, firewall. Like, really had to basically make it from scratch, you know. Okay. There was a stock firewall, but it had, had already been recessed and recessed kind of poorly. Okay. So I, I liked more the look of the flipped firewalls. And if I had, nice. yeah, if I had had a stock, like a clean stock firewall, I would have just flipped it, mm -hmm. but I didn't. And uh, so start from scratch, really, I used some pieces of the, the one that was in here, flipped those. So like the outer edge of it's so a stock flipped, but then the whole middle piece I kind of made from scratch. And, and that was cool because I'm inexperienced in metalwork, but... I loved the the chance to learn yeah. and like you know bought a cheap bead roller from Eastwood and like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a go. Yep. Um, that's one of the things in the history of me and building cars. Um, I feel like I've always just had this attitude that I can try it and I can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of that comes from um, my grandpa Ron. And so I'm gonna take a moment to like. Tribute to my grandpa, Ron. Um, so he owned a fab shop up in northern Idaho, uh, Coeur d'Alene area. Okay. And uh, so I wasn't always around him because we lived here in Modesto, but we'd go up there in the summers and stuff. And uh, he owned this fab shop and he was always making all sorts of things, um, you know, not necessarily automotive or whatever, mm -hmm. but he did have some cars. Um, he had two boats that he made from scratch. And that just, you know, I was a young kid, like, like probably, the wooden type boats? no, like metal boats, oh, really? metal boats. One was aluminum and one was steel. Oh, wow. And uh, just as a kid, I'm like 10 years old and they're telling me, yeah, your grandpa Ron made this boat and we're <laughs> going to go out in it. And I'm like, wow, you can, people can do that. Like, wow, cool. and that just kind of kicked something in my brain. Like yeah. I can make stuff, you know, um, and my mom's artistic and, you know, always instilled art, art in me. Yeah. So I just kind of have this innate thing. Like I can visualize stuff and I can make it out of nothing, you know, um, not to toot my own horn. I'm still <laughs> learning a lot, but I soak it in, you know, I see other people do it and I see that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I want to try and do yeah. that. So, yeah. so getting the chance to do a lot of that with this car was a lot of fun. So doing a firewall, I had to do like, I did all new floors in it. I put steel floors in it. You know, I just had wood floors before right. um, the Stock trunk. Wood, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a subfloor that's steel, but then it right. wood. Uh, so I put steel floors in it. Um, when I stripped it, probably the bottom four inches of the entire car was all rusted out. Yep. Very common. You know, yeah. And when you when we bought the car, we thought we bought it because it looks so solid. Oh man, it's a solid so we, one. It's rust free. Like, you know, car. Yeah. Um, they but used it, the right kind of filler to make it look. Yeah. Just, just right. Try, yeah. Yep. So I had to just do a lot of rust repair. Yeah. Um, I bobbed the rear fenders a little bit. Okay. Uh, just enough that I felt like it didn't look too crazy. Okay. Um, and it was more of sectioning them because some guys will just chop them. And so I took the bottom piece and I think I took three inches out and just put it back. It yeah. Okay. Cause the model A's, the fenders hang so low. I wanted it to look a little bit more, you know, 32 esque yeah. in the rear. Yeah. So it's kicked up a little. And then, uh, I brought the tail pan down. There's a, like a roll pan there. Okay. That was a kid I bought, but I like the look that, it brought the tail down and the fenders up and yeah. it's a little bit more yeah. tight yeah, in the rear. Good, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, sheet metal work. Oh, I put a 32 style insert on the roof. Um, so model a roofs have like a flat front, uh, insert. And I knew I wanted to keep the 
the vinyl insert on the roof. Um, so it's just a, a rounded piece. A guy named, well, he goes by Flop Customs on Instagram. I found him okay. that makes that nice. part. Yeah. So I, I put that on there. Um, again, it was just like all these little subtle things that I tried to take time, keep the car looking fairly stock. Uh, but clean it up, you know, design wise. So you're running a 32 shell. Yeah, 32 shell. But a 30 hood. The yeah. Transition. Did you do the transition or did you buy like a root lid unit? It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty much um, just massaged. Okay. Yeah. And then the sides are, the, are original. Yeah. Okay, I don't, yeah. You don't really have to change the sides for the grill, do you? Or do you? Not really. Okay. Yeah, so just massaging it just enough to fit. Yeah. Obviously, the back doesn't change, but the front does because the, the curve's a little different. Yeah, curve's a little different. It's, a, it's probably a little more subtle, right? Because the A's are a little sharper. Right. Transition. Yeah, it's so more. They're more flat on the top little, and then down. So it was just massaging the the just front of the hood, the really. And, yeah, yeah, to get it to fit. But yeah. Did a great job. It's thanks. Um, so the thirty-two grill was on it, and I did do a lot of work up here. Um, it had a had a recessed Ford emblem in the front of the hood. Okay. Again, like maybe it was '90s custom, like trying to recess yeah, an really, emblem in it. Have no. Um, <laughs> so I deleted knock, that. Knock the ugly off. Yeah, I deleted that. Um, dropped the headlights quite a bit. Uh, so this dropped headlight bar I fabricated from scratch. Cool. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you about that placement. Yeah. So. Stock bolts would have been, I reused one, and then the other one would have been just slightly up above it. So that was one way to move it down a little bit, was just relocating the bracket. And then the bar itself, um, I took pieces of the bar, the stock bar, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you know bent a pretty crazy S so it would drop. Okay. Trying to get them really as low as yeah. I could. Yeah. I think that really helps with the you know, kind of sleekness of, yeah. of the Model A. Um, but keeping the, you know, the stock you size had, headlights. You had drawn all this out before did, yeah. you started building it, yeah. which is, I bet you less than 1% of the people do that yeah. in the car. But you've got the skills to do it, so that's, well, that's great. Thank you. I, you know, I do like to draw, and I like to think through problems kind of before they arise or, or right. visualize stuff. Um, so I kind of have that weird ability um like even when we bought our current house we had to do a huge remodel and uh my, you know i had to sell my wife on some stuff right. she's like i can't picture what this room would look like yeah. like well let me draw you a picture <laughs> and i did like nice. so nice. yeah uh metal work it, it did a lot of about metal work and yeah. then you know try to keep minor filler primer trying yeah. to use decent products um, Which products did you use, by the way? So all Evercoat stuff on okay. fillers. Okay. Um, the paint, man. I feel like I kind of want to keep it a secret. I'm fine with that. <laughs> you can tell me off camera. Okay. I've, I've so yeah, I painted it right here in the garage. Right on. You know, well, it's a hot rod, man. It, I mean, that's one of the reasons I want to do this. It is. Is because Thanks. you built it in your garage with yeah. your tools and yeah. your family, and it's just like, to me, that's like the best of the best way to do things wheel and tire size are, are 15s or 15s yeah 15s um and in hindsight 16s would have been easier to find tires um really yeah because i'm gonna i will be running 16s on mine. yeah more so, for the style and the era yeah. i'm going after and i was i was kind of in that line of thinking too yeah. but um i started with with rims um yeah 15 by i think they're fours in the front and 15 by sevens in the rear okay um and then uh these are the coker um american classic okay. so they look like a bias ply but they're a radial okay. um which i like these tires uh they yeah, weren't they look, cheap they look great i didn't know they were a radial yeah that's awesome they weren't cheap so that was kind of a splurge purchase to get the right tires on the front um the rears it, that's where it was like I wanted a tall enough tire, um, but on the 15-inch rim, yeah. I think the about the tallest I could find is like a 31-inch 
tall tire and they're just truck tires they're like a firestone something the truck tire are also truck tires. yeah they the they're powder coated black oh, powder um coated. Okay. and that's it's just yeah i think powder coat yeah it's not super super gloss shell. yeah yeah they look great they look yeah really great. oh thanks uh they're you know some people don't like the sp uh, spare tire look um you know black without like a beauty ring or anything and I actually have beauty rings for these. Yeah. I'm just torn on. Well, I, once I, I put them on, then hey, you know I do yeah, too. too. I do too. With the wheel. I do too. I think they'll. Yeah. Fine. yeah. I think, you know what? Hey. Everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. And it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, and the so black the and the, the black and the gray. The look. Yeah. yeah, black and the gray is kind of what I was going for yeah. too. Yeah. You know, um, just keeping it like black, a little bit of contrast. Grill, yeah. Which is. A real hot rod thing. Yeah. I mean, you see them red, you see them black, yeah. and then you see them just regular. Yeah. You know. Um, I think it was, it was a like a really rough polish on it when I got it, and okay. I was like, oh, do I want to polish it out or just black it out? Have, and I like just, to black you it just out. Painted it then. Yeah. You, it's not powder coated. It's it's painted. Okay. Yeah. You had any issues with like the chipping? Or? Well, it, again, it's a, a garage built hot rod, Lance. So, you know, <laughs> it's going to get some bug chips and stuff. Right on. Hey, That's what you I, want. right. So, yeah, it's probably got some bees and bugs in it right now. That's, um, awesome. That's good. It's, it's, right. it's meant to be driven. I'm not going to cry if it gets a scratch, <laughs> right you know, on. so right on. that's, that's this and car. You know, and that's the thing about building it in your garage. You built it once. You can fix it yeah. if you want to. Yeah. The dash is metal flake. You did that. Yeah. Did so. That. And then let's the, talk about the interior a little bit. Okay. Yeah. The dash is a 39 Ford. Um, okay. That was a swap meet find. Nice. Turlock swap meet. Is it already shortened? Or no. Shorten no. Yeah. So I had to short, shorten it okay. and get it mounted up in there. Um, yeah. Uh, and new gauges and stuff for yeah. that to, to fit the 39. Um, which I just like those like 3940 uh, yeah. grills and dashes. And yeah. so yeah, they yeah, just, they nice. just have a cool kind of, kind of look to them. Um, so yeah, I metal flake that just like kind of want a little contrast in the car, a little red. I, I still think I might like do some red pinstriping on this somewhere, but it would be really small and like subtle. I'm kind of, I think that would be, I think that would be cool. Even, yeah. a, even a thin pinstripe around your outside of your wheel. Yeah. Just some little something, here. yeah, or even do the lettering in the wheel, yeah, Ford, yeah, red or that would be cool. A little touch here and there, yeah. Do you do you pinstripe? I do a little bit, okay. I mean, I've tried it, yeah, I don't have a hand for it, yeah. Uh, my wife is actually pretty good at it, awesome. Um, That's just it, it takes practice, it it's like dedicating yourself to a, a new craft, really. You watch I mean, somebody who's done it, that's yeah. Like, does it a lot yeah. and they make it look easy which all yeah. professionals do that way. right it doesn't matter what they do it's like yeah. they'll whip it all up you know yeah um yeah i think that's yeah. a great idea just yeah. a little touch of red it's cool that you can see the dash yeah the red line across the dash yeah. from outside yeah because that really and then the steering wheel it's yeah. a nice it's a nice little touch set it off a little off. bit yeah 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 it's, um so once i had it all painted and stuff um final assembly was you know plumbing and wiring i'd never wired a whole car myself um and so again you know kind of learning as i go but kit, sure yeah you. painless wire harness okay. um and uh you know just took my time yeah. really uh, and tried to just be meticulous and, yeah, yeah yeah i know yeah. they make i've not i've not done one complete yeah but uh they do make it they do make it for people who haven't done it. Yeah. So it's kind of self-explanatory, which is like, if you understand how a car works, you can, yes. you can wrap your head around it. If yeah. you don't understand how a car works, it's going to be more complicated. But yeah. most of the guys that buy those kits are like, you know where the headlights are, yeah. you know where the ignition switches, yeah. you know where the starter wires go, right? right? Yeah. So, and yeah. Then, so got it all plumbed and wired up. Um, you know, it put so many parts on it newer parts on it and uh and it the whole build process you know took a little longer than expected as they do, they do. so it was probably what we set out to be like two years was probably closer to four or five years just trying to get it back running again okay. you know it, a couple of hiccups but okay. got it all put together running and then sent it out for exhaust and upholstery which were really the only two things i subbed out okay. um who do you have your exhaust 
uh, local shop here, Performance Muffler um, in Oakdale. They've done a bunch of things for me in the past, and good guy. Um, uh, MagnaFlow, um, their MagnaFlow mufflers are pretty much straight shot um, okay. tubes. Okay. Yeah. Are there actually mufflers? They're not glass packs. They're actually mufflers, okay. but in the very rough sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, upholstery. You know, it's just. Pretty simple, uh, all leather. Uh, bucket seats, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, those are pro car bucket seats made, made to look like an old Mustang um, okay. seat. Okay. But uh, yeah, I just did bought, those. Bought pro car for yeah. The, for the, for the so um, yeah, I came back from upholstery and then uh, there were a couple other things to address, you know, to get it like fully running. And when I say a couple other things, uh, we really found out like I hadn't. I think it was me. I hadn't bolted the flywheel on very well. And so the flywheel was just like coming off. Is it automatic? Uh, automatic, yeah. Three speed? Uh, yeah, turbo 350, okay. um, three speed. Bulletproof 350, 350? 350. Yeah, 350, 350. I mean, yeah, so it's a small block Chevy, uh, I know, and a Ford. True, but man. It gets but it's, yeah, I mean, does, Hot Rodder's been doing that for a long time. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, I, I like the combo. Um, so, so I had to pull the motor again, basically long story short, you know, you think the car is done, it's back from so upholstery. You, you can, you can, there had, you were, there was no way to tighten it the way it was. You no. Well, and you know, the, part of it too was, I wasn't quite sure that's what it was oh, when it was in okay. the car. I yeah. thought maybe something else was hurt. Okay. So I wanted to dive into the motor a little right. bit more right. than just leaning over the fenders and working on the cars. Right. Only so comfortable. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, had to dive back into it again, but got it all buttoned back up kind of for a final time, final, final, final assembly. Right. And uh, that was about last summer, so 2021. Okay. was really getting it driving on the road. Um, yeah, uh, still think there's things to be done, but um, I'm enjoying it. And, yeah, me and my dad are enjoying it, and that's, that's awesome. a cool thing, you know. Yeah. we've bonded over yeah. uh for many years and that we have similar hobbies similar interests That's great. you know we're both invested into the car um and uh and it, yeah it's a lot of fun so we need some more uh early iron around this area we too do. cruising do. around yeah. yeah speed and chrome has always been like ins inspirational just yeah. some of the things you cover your videos your magazine and uh and you know, you, you don't know who you're reaching. You're reaching the guy who's dreaming right now, who's maybe gonna find that project and, uh, and build it up and then, you know, be sitting here someday, so. And it's funny because a lot of the people only know me through YouTube but don't even know I published a magazine yeah. called Speed and Chrome Illustrated. Yeah. Which is funny because I'm reaching a new audience, but thank you for that, I appreciate yeah. that. All right, so I'm gonna get in here. Get in here without hurting myself. <laughs> Six foot seven. I have to go in head first. Are you that tall? Yeah. Oh man. Just close it normal. Uh, you don't have to slam that side. Okay. okay. Good. There you go. Yeah. Okay.
because I don't have my dual dual microphones. I ordered them, and then and then uh, Amazon said, "Oh, we're not shipping those right now." There is very few. 